peace family today i want to talk about coloring your locks well not necessarily coloring your locks preparing your hair for color if coloring your locks is one of your goals so i've been receiving so many questions about coloring locks. And I think it's a great question. All the questions that are asked are really great. But this one in particular is really great, like how to prepare your hair for color, because many people don't think about that. They're just like, I want my hair to be copper, or I want my hair to be blonde, I want my hair to be magenta or purple or blue or green, irregardless of the consequences that may or may not come with that. And so to have the foresight to consider how this is really gonna fuck my hair is a great thing. <laughs> um, so if you've been thinking about coloring your hair and you want to know how to prep your hair for color, I'm gonna share a few things that I think will help you in the long run. The first thing I'll say with preparing your locks for hair color is take a step back to prepare your mind and your budget for hair color because coloring your locks is not the same as just cultivating or maintaining locks that are not colored when you have your natural color you have all your natural proteins you have just the natural sheen and strength of your locks of your hair fibers but when you decide to go in and color them whether it's with bleach, lightener, or just traditional hair color, there are consequences to that strength in your locks, which means you are then going to need to be more intentional and proactive with your treatments, with your um, product usage, with your clarification process, with your scalp care. All of those things are now like, you have to be on it because you have color. So get your mind right for what it's gonna to take to care for the color. Then number two, get your budget right. If you're doing this color at home, which I don't advise, but if you happen to be doing the color at your home, on the other side of having color, I would highly, highly suggest getting a steamer, a steam so you can do steam treatments on a consistent basis finding you a conditioner, whether that is a leave-in conditioner or a rinse-out conditioner, that works well with your hair texture and the size of your locks. It's important to have before you go into the process, okay? And now let's talk about what it looks like when you do have a color, like to prepare your hair for color. If you have concerns about your hair being dry or brittle, or if you're experiencing shedding or breakage, you should not color your hair. If you have concerns about your hair being dry or brittle or shedding or breaking, you should not color your hair. Please don't color your hair if you already have concerns about it being dry because coloring it will make it worse, okay? And so then you'll definitely have breakage. If you have concerns about your hair being dry or brittle, or shedding or breaking, you should not color your hair. So don't color if you have any concerns with moisture. You have to balance the moisture in your hair first. So that, that's step number one. Number zero is getting your mind and your budget ready. Step number one is getting the moisture balanced in your locks. Step number two is checking how much lint or build up you have in your locks. Now I know a lot of people, I don't say a lot, I know there are conversations around coloring your hair to cover lint. And while that sounds like it may work, a lot of times the lint that you see in your hair is build up and the color doesn't really cover build up. And so I say be aware of that or work to get rid of it because when you decide to color your hair, if you have buildup or if you have large areas of lint, 
they will show through the color and they make them more noticeable to other people or just to yourself. So get the detoxes together, detox your hair, do what you need to do to get rid of lint or build up. If you need help with that, I'll link you down below to the workshop for how to remove lint and the guide for the recipes to detox your locks properly. Because again, we're preparing our hair for a chemical service, right? We're not just trying whatever baking soda, vinegar stuff is out there. No, we're doing something intentional. All right, so guides down below. So you got your mind right, you got your budget right, you got the moisture right, you got the lint and build up together. Okay, it's a lot, right? It's a lot, I'm telling you. And this is why you have to be aware of it because once you color, the intensity increases. Because the third thing that I want you to think about or consider is the maintenance of it, okay? Because one, your hair is still growing. So just cause you color your hair blonde, your hair is naturally dark brown, well, as your hair is growing, your roots are gonna be dark brown. How often are you gonna be coloring your hair to touch it up to maintain that color? If you color your hair green, I personally refresh my color every eight weeks. It's a lot. Over and over and over again. Keeping in mind that just because something says permanent color does not mean it's gonna stay forever. Okay, that is just like a marketing term. Permanent color with locks, is only lasting a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, okay? At the same vibrancy that you initially did it with. So think about the maintenance and prepare your hair, your budget, your mind, um, your schedule for what that entails. Also consider as you're preparing your hair for color that there are risks. You may have allergies. To color. If you so happen to bleach your hair, which I do not recommend, but if you so happen to bleach your hair, and especially if you bleach it at home, you run the risk of that bleach being trapped inside your locks and deteriorating or eating your lock from the inside out. So just understand with the application of the color, you are risking the integrity or the or the the likelihood that you'll still have locks on your head. I'm just being honest because it's true. It's something that I wish everyone would have this open, candid conversation with people about color because there's a lot to it. So yeah, those would be the main things that I would say you should consider, that you should do to prepare your hair for color. If you have any other suggestions or if you've been coloring your hair and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish somebody would have told me this before I did it, please drop it in the comments below. If you are a stylist or professional and you color locks or you're a colorist and you have tips and suggestions, drop those definitely in the comments below. Um, if I scared you good, because I don't want you going into this situation lightly. I want you to know that this is a, it's somewhat of a commitment, but it's also just a inherent risk. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot. So uh, with that being said, let me know if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, suggestions for other videos, drop those in the comments. And as always, I am wishing you peace, love, and good vibes.